Hi everyone and welcome to the Agents for Creative Action staff interview series. My name is Victoria, I'm an Econ and Statistics major, and I'm going to really quickly introduce this series and then we'll dive into the interview. So one of the continued projects we're doing as members of WICMA's ACA group is connecting with the museum staff in times of social isolation and distancing. Um, one of the central parts is meeting with WICMA staff in person and learning about what they do um, and getting to know more about the museum. Uh, we're not able to do this in person now, but I, we think Zoom and um, interviews are still great. Um, and we're hoping to connect with the staff as well and what they do at the museum. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to my co-hosts and have them introduce themselves as well as the speaker. Hello, my name is Javier. I'm a sophomore and I'm an art history and studio art major, and I'm glad to be here. Hi, I'm Erica. Um, I'm a senior art, art history and studio major um, as well, and very glad to be talking with you today, Christina. And I'm CJ. I'm a senior. I only study art history, either fortunately or unfortunately. Um, and I echo everyone else's sentiments about their excitement. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your interview series. Um, I'm Christina Yang. I'm the Deputy Director for Engagement and Curator of Education at the Williams College Museum of Art. Um, I started here um, in uh, last fall. Well, but, I mean, it seems like so long ago, like you know, pre pre Corona times. Um, and before that, uh, I was um, at the Guggenheim for almost 15 years as their director of public programs. Um, but I'm also a graduate of the Williams College Master's Program in the History of Art. So it's sort of like, you know, all coming full, full circle and I'm really excited to talk to you um, and hear your questions. Okay, so our first question is, um, after you talk about how you spent 15 years at the Guggenheim, um, what what prompted you to transition over to the WICMA? You know, both are very different institutions, so I'm eager to hear about your thought process in making that show. Sure, sure. Thank you for such a uh, fantastic question. It's, it's both a question with like a short answer and a little slightly longer answer. So the short answer is that I wanted to come to um, a museum, an, in an institution where I could bring together um, sort of a diverse set of interests and that were um, sort of kept separate when, when I was working uh, in New York at the Guggenheim. And those interests spanned uh, working as a curator, uh, doing research as a scholar, and, and teaching. So um, coming to a college art museum really made sense to be able to bring all three of those things together. Um, you know, I see myself as a sort of um, curator of like experimental practices and, and taking my lead from artists. So, um, my work um, in different museum settings, from the, like the Queen's Museum to the Kitchen to the Guggenheim, um, followed, followed that, that trajectory, um, whether it was um, a curator who was focusing on new media or someone who was focusing on performance, uh, and then on pedagogy and, and social practice. So, so that was sort of, I would say that was the arc of my curatorial work. And about five years ago, I re-entered a new PhD program in performance studies at NYU, and that really allowed me to bring my uh, work as an art historian, my previous work as an art historian and as a contemporary art curator, into a, an umbrella under performance theory. So, um, you know, performance studies is an interdisciplinary uh, area, and it really allows the practitioner to uh, bring together, you know, who who they think of uh, as performance, what, you know, what, what what they what they want to um, identify as making an impact in the world. So, I mean, in a way, I followed a very traditional trajectory, you know, coming going from art history and then becoming a curator and thinking about performance studies. Um, I think it's oftentimes uh, performance studies is confused with the study of performance art, which is are two different things. And I can go into it a little bit more, maybe with some of your other questions. Um, but um, but so when I started back in school five years ago, that really uh, brought me back to wanting to write and to teach. And, you know, after after a, a decade at the Guggenheim, which was a really amazing place to work, I had fantastic colleagues. Um, it was a very good job. I, I just felt like I was um, missing something in terms of really 
doing the more kind of dynamic uh, work and, and do, teaching myself. And I, I have a pretty broad view of what, what constitutes teaching, but nonetheless, I was really working more, I would say, as, a, as an administrator and as a manager, which was good work and, 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 and a delight to work with amazing people, but it wasn't tied so much to, to ideas that I had and to a kind of like, uh, yeah, just a, just a vision that I wanted to, to, to be working, working from. Uh, I think I'll end it there. <laughs> Wait for your next question. Yeah, um, so going off of that, um, now that you're at Wigma, um, thinking about how you combine these different fields of curating education, um, like through like which programs do you see this being implemented at the museum and how do you see them taking place? And a really generative question. So thank you to all of you for thinking through how to how to prompt me, <laughs> prompt me to talk about my background and, and what I what I love to do. Um, so I interestingly enough, you know, when I was interviewing for this position, the idea of programming and what I would do at WICMA didn't come up so much. I think, you know, WICMA had a very good sense of its own identity. It also had a sense, it also I think had a sense of like that they were looking for a person. They were looking for a kind of set of qualities and a background that would fit into what they broadly saw and what Pam, you know, our director, how she wanted to shape the future of the museum, the future and, you know, present of the museum. Um, and so, 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 you know, a lot of the conversation focused on, on, on actually scenarios at the museum itself and sort of like, you know, how that could be worked with and, you know, it's, it's very influential and uh, well-known reputation and um, the student body. So it, 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 the conversation I think had more to do with like speculative um, exercises. Um, so, so but, but in terms of like what I wanted to bring, I guess, to WICMA from, from a previous background, um, you know, very much what excited me was a chance really to work collaboratively with an amazing, another set of amazing colleagues. Um, I, I mean, and the chance to work with students directly, especially with Williams College students, was very, very exciting. Um, you know, I think if I were to if I were to propose ideas, you know, they would always come out of of um, either working with artists or likely, you know, working in live live programming. So um, the, the, the ideas were not so much built around exhibitions, although I do think. Um, gallery presentations are an interesting, potentially hybrid space. And so, um, you know, I very much knew about the work that, that Nina had done as, as a program curator. And so I was really interested in, in her practice and think, thinking about ways that we could collaborate together and ways in which I could support her work and which we could see different projects coming about. Um, uh, I do have my own instincts about things that I love and, and they, they do veer towards performance arts, artists who work in the live and artists who work in social practice. Um, you know, I'm very, very interested in this idea that um, an, an audience member can enter a museum space thinking they're coming to learn about art and aesthetics, but actually leave um, motivated to think about other issues like, I mean, I was in particular interested in, you know, the political state of our country. I'm interested in what constitutes citizenship. Um, so I'm interested in the museum space as a space for civic um, engagement, and but I, you know, without really knowing intimately, you know, the Williams community, the Williams, the Wickham context, the region, you don't you don't bring those that kind of those kind of ideas and, and directly uh, graft them onto a context. You really have to have the context itself, you know, kind of give you give you the the kind of tools and the, and the, the, the ingredients that you're working with, and then you can match it with you know, relationships that you have and, and other kinds of, um, you know, other kinds of mixing. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that would say is a, is a broad answer with some specifics in it. <laughs> um, through your discussion of your work at the Guggenheim and at WICMA, um, I've noticed a really cool, like, mixture of both curatorial and education and your interest in both. Um, and I'm wondering how you see curatorial practice and education in a similar way and if you think they inform each other um, and how you have approached the two um, together. Thank you for that question as well, Erica. Um, so 
it's interesting because that question um, raises like different genealogies, I would say, of, of, of thinking and practice. And one of them being, um, you know, the genealogy of education pedagogy. And I would say from the outset that I, I'm not a trained educator. You know, I didn't study childhood psychology or developmental phases or, you know, teaching, teaching in, that, in that way. I really, again, come from a pretty, uh, you know, humanities, cultural studies background. Um, so, so uh, but, but I do think that in museums, um, particularly art museums, the education and engagement departments are among the most vital departments and where kind of the most progressive work is happening and where it's also a department that responds to um, things that are happening in the world, things that are happening and it's kind of very quickly. And, 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 and it's obviously based on um, being able to um, basically be able to like see its audience as a, a co-participant and a collaborator in, in making, make, making it program, making its work. So, so I would say I, I've always had a pretty progressive view of what constitutes engagement at a museum. And I've also taken it, um, um, taken it on as, as, as an area of curatorial work. So it's one that's grounded in research and grounded in, um, in, in, in kind of very detailed crafting of, of a live experience. Um, and it's also, you know, grounded in collaboration. Um, but having said that, I, I've been fundamentally changed, you know, working in an, within an education department at a museum, you know, for over the last decade. And um, I, would, I would definitely say that the rigor whereby, um, you know, facilitating a great, a great learning opportunity is, is something that I am still, you know, learning myself. And, and you know, um, so, so learning to be a great teacher is something that I'm really interested in. And, and, and I'm also interested in it, though, um, as an artistic practice. I mean, artists who play with like the lecture performance mode or with uh, the idea of a course or a symposium or something. So, so I, I sort of see engagement and curatorial work at a college or museum in particular as a very experimental and, a, and as a very interdisciplinary. I don't, I don't, I don't come from it from a traditional place, and I don't see it as a traditional, and I also don't see it as, as a static form. Um, I really, uh, you know, see it for all its potentiality, um, and hopefully for you know for for, for how it can be, um, how it can bring audiences to, you know, a, a new state of transformation. How it can promote, you know, awe in the face of both a very complicated world, but also with objects of art as their kind of. Um, as a kind of model for 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 conversations, um, and and also I, I also think the museum space itself is very different. I mean, than than a classroom, um, you know, it's a it's a place where you can be both have a private experience, but it's also a very public space. So I, I think that that um, you know potentiality is is what really interests me about um, about I guess blending the two kinds of two practices. And small tangent, um, a little <laughs> bit more of a vague question. If your inspirations were all in a photo book, um, what would the photos be of? Um, I like I like segue questions. That's a it's a it's a nice nice time to think about that. Um, so, um, I mean, it, it obviously it it might make sense, you know, for a curator if they're comfortable in thinking about images that they would, you know, take to something like social media, you know, like whether it's Instagram or Facebook, but um, to, to be honest, I mean, I, I engaged in social media really as an exercise to get to know my audience and exercise to get to know the ways in which people connecting with each other. And so it was very much for me, that exercise was about creating a persona and creating an identity around certain kinds of threads of visual communication. Um, I think social media, um, you know, kind of ferrets out in in authenticity very very quickly, and so of course that those images and those ideas had to really come from me, and so they're always always about art or nature or my family with a slight kind of political political um, bent to it. Um, but interestingly enough, um, and and this I would say say also characterizes my work as a curator. Um, I would say for the last decade, the things that most interested me as a visual art practice are actually things that are hard to see. So things, so, and, and within that area of things that are hard to see, um, I've, I've really kind of um, 
taken a deep dive into experimental dance practices. And, um, and that's something, you know, if I, if I were to fill up a book about, you know, what, what fascinates me and what, what engages me, what, what am I thinking about these days, it would be, you know, a portfolio of different artists working in experimental dance. So, you know, um, people like Trajo Harrell or Jen Rosenblatt or Miguel Gutierrez, um, Jillian Walsh, Sarah Mitchelson. I mean, people who are working in museums and working in performance, but also come from a dance background. Eve Laris Cohen is someone I'm also interest, really interested in. And, and I am super fascinated by how the body remembers and captures and, um, and is affected by these you know, transformative uh, works of art that, that, are, that are coming from, a, from an art form that is meant to be ephemeral, but also meant to be very much about how movement, um, how movement reflects many things, whether it's personal vision, social control, or a, a, other kinds of, of community. So, so I guess I'm, I'm interested in images that, um, or yeah, images that, that wh where there's oftentimes other kinds of invisible things happening. <laughs> oh, so you've talked about your work with performance studies. Um, like you mentioned that it's not the same as the study of performance art. Um, so I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to that and like um, how does this connect with your work as a museum pr practitioner? So uh, I thought I would actually give that answer or answer that question in a way that's, um, you know, logical um, and I think the best way for me to do it is to reference the work of a, of a German art historian whose name is Dorothea van Hontelman. Uh, this is the book I'm going to send all of you for, for your, as your gift, <laughs> if you haven't had it already, you don't have it already. Um, she wrote a book called How to Do Things with Art. Um, and the book is a study, you know, four different case studies of artists working in the exhibition format. And um, I'm, I'm going to read you a quote from her, from the book, because um, I don't want to misquote her. But... I mean, the way I see the sort of intersection of performance, performance studies, performance art, museum work, is um, when she is quoting um, two theoretical uh, writers, uh, John Austin and Judith Butler. Uh, and she says, first, there is no performative artwork because there is no non-performative artwork. Um, so, and then she, then she wants, writes about another sentence, but her, her next, the next part of her uh, introduction really basically says that the work of art is always performing. So, so um, I have always seen that as, you know, my, my opening, my, my space for thinking that um, everything that goes into an art experience, you know, a label, the person at the front desk, the object itself, the frame, you know, where it's positioned, um, the state of mind of the person who comes in, you know, those are all forces that are making the work of art. And so the work of art is not just the object itself, it's actually what's performed with the performance is not just the work of art itself. It, the performance is the entirety of factors that are going into constructing an experience. Um, and, and the study of performance comes from this idea of something that makes a change, you know, in people's consciousness. Um, in performance art, I would actually put more in um, a trajectory of how artistic people are trained as artists and artistic practitioners maybe emerging from a visual art tradition, from a studio tradition, have used their body as part of their artwork. So that's a very different kind of um, practice, which is thinking about objects and thinking about the body, um, but also potentially could be thinking about the audience as well. And performance studies is, is a study of everything that's happening around those kinds of factors. So performance studies could, could take as its subject anything from like kitchen everyday domestic rituals to you know, hip hop music and the global whatever environment, to performance art or to uh, a you know museum exhibition. Um, so I would say performance studies is a wider range of things to study. Although each individual scholar in performance studies kind of picks their their own interdisciplinary focus that, that they're interested in. Um, anyway, so that's that that's my <laughs> my 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 kind of uh, short. Short, short soundbite on performance studies and museum work. And going off of that, um, I'm really intrigued by this shared element or thread mm. of live 
uniqueness um, in, in both in performance art and performance studies, broadly speaking, and also in museum education and what it means to be a visitor. I was wondering if you could elaborate more on that, on those points of convergence and how you try to approach them and frame them within your own practice. Thank, thank you so much for that question, CJ. And actually, that's a question I'd love to actually, once I give you my answer, actually hear your answers on it as well, because um, I feel like it's a question that's very, um, I, ho I hope it's relevant to the way you're, you're learning as, as young um, museum practitioners yourself. Um, so I would say that, um, um, you know, performance studies, performance art, uh, and versus museum education, I mean, they do share a lot of tools that they work with, you know, facilitating a conversation, um, creating a space of comfort when maybe having difficult, a difficult, you know, talking about different topics, um, you know, coming together as a community to, to learn, to, to, to do something different. Um, but I, I guess, you know, the, the sort of, you know, tension that I, that I, that I try to work, work up against is that education is oftentimes, you know, deployed and scripted along, you know, along forms of social control, you know, the classroom, the jail, um, you know, uh, uh, even a theater, you know, are forms of, of ways of organizing society, organizing people. And I would say um, performance is actually, the performance I'm interested in is actually something that pushes against discipline and pushes against control and pushes against, um, of, you know, hegemony and, and, and um, kind of, Cap, you know, well, I don't want to say capitalism, but it pushes against, um, you know, pushes against a, a, a kind of uh, something that would that would seek to um, I don't know, seek, seek to make the, the individual a more passive, you know, um, entity. So, so I, I am interested, I guess, in a third space, you know, that is comfortable and that is um that is that, that is a good place to actually discover new things um so so it is controlled <laughs> to a certain and it, it is scripted it is it is kind of like designed but i'm also interested in you know the result of that coming out of it as like something that is more up breaking out breaking out of those of those those kinds of um those kinds of containers i guess so, um, but, um, but I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, can I ask you, you know, what, what, what drew you into working and wanting to be part of the museum student group? And, and you know, how, do you, how have you felt, I mean, many of you are seniors now and, and uh, advising upper class people. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm curious, you know, how the museum has factored into your, into your you know, college education. And I can start. Um... Um, when I first joined in freshman year, it was like, I don't know, it was a very small niche group. Um, but I think just working with the museum and getting to know it better, um, I don't know, I think I saw a lot of potential. Um, I couldn't really understand why some of my classmates wouldn't come. I think that's what also pushed me was that I really wanted to share um, the great experience I had in the museum with my friends who could access it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, uh, I initially started work like when I first got to Wigma, I was at to Williams, I was sure I wanted to work at Wigma, but more because of, like I was interested in art and the museum seemed like the obvious sort of job on campus to get. But <laughs> working at Wigma, I've just learned a lot more about like this idea of like the museum as a performative space, and, like a place where like connections between like the audience and and the staff and education and the art happens rather than just like the art by itself. Yeah, I um I actually didn't come into college like knowing I was interested in art at all. Like I came in thinking I would be a chem major, mm -hmm. um, took orgo and everything, but um I thought like, and it, I like took some art history classes, but I think what makes like the museum space particularly like exciting and interesting is it, like has the power to sort of like animate things that you learn um, and like the conceptual 
into like an embodied experience and like an experience with art um, and facilitating that has been like something that like excites me more than, you know, like reading about art or just like taking the time and staring at it, but like instead facilitating connections and like, like an experience like inside a space. Um, so that's what I've like found really exciting and like got out of ACA and all the other like various programs I've done at WICMA um, over the years. Uh, I, I guess for me, um, like adding on to what everyone said, I've always, like even before I knew what institutional critique or some variant of it was, <laughs> I was always interested in it, you know, it was that thing that that was there without a name. Um, and in the past four years, I mean, the WICMA has really exemplified this kind of boundary pushing um, impulse um, in terms of the exhibitions that it shows, in terms of the artists it decides to work with, and in terms of the structures of working and collaborating that it actively promotes, you know, I like the degree of student involvement in one in one instance is just the testament to that. Um, so I think like the, the museum has been a really great way of giving all of, well, I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone, but like for myself, um, a degree of agency and a degree of I don't like not even seriousness is not the right word but just like a sense of like faith and trust in what students can bring and give to the institution you know um and for that I'm always going to be grateful um so yeah those are such amazing answers and I mean they're all different but they all kind of provide this like beautiful profile of what um you know what a museum can be um oh I see Elliot or Nina has joined us back again, or maybe not. Um, maybe not. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm also I'm also curious if like um, you know ha you having been um, now you know part of ACA and sort of working at the museum for several years, um, do any of you think that you might go on and work in a museum like as a career, or in what way will the museum pay, play a role in your your future? I don't know about working in one yet, but I know I'll be visiting a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Nina, everyone else is muted, but uh, okay, CJ. Oh, um, <laughs> as for me, I... <laughs> Well, I mean, like, as ev almost every senior can attest, you know, we're just like, what are we doing? You know, where are we going? I'm not really sure. Um, but I know that working with art and working with the various forms of publics, uh, of the public that a museum deals with on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be a central priority. So I guess now it's just a matter of really Car finding and carving out that position um, and that position that's at those crossroads of my various overlapping interests. Yeah, I would agree. I think at this point, also a senior and like thinking about what I want to do and um, the museum just feels like something that like has the intersection of like all the things I'm interested in and like partly provides this like unique challenge I think that is always going to engage me and like push me to like find new ways of like experimenting with art and like showing art and um so that's yeah I I think I, I will probably end up working in the museum but it just depends how I get there <laughs> what's what that path is going to look like but um for me one like one of the highlights of working at Wigma is just like this idea of using art as a means for like education and fostering relationships and community and unsure if it's whether through the making of my own art or working with art that has already been created but that's where I'm really interested in like working in this idea of like art education and it's potential. Right. Are there, are there other things I could, I could, uh, you know, we could talk about? <laughs> Christina, I actually have a question. Sure. Um, okay. Just 
I mean, thinking, I mean, CJ and I talking about like our senior year, yeah. what did you think you would be doing when you like first graduated college or like early on in your career? And how has that changed? Um, so I actually was thinking about that. I was thinking about what, what can I offer? or, you know, uh, graduating seniors about like when I was a graduating senior. Um, so I was, I, I, you know, was very lucky and I have been very lucky that actually as a senior, um, you know, I sort of had this revelation when I realized that I, I, I was a history major. Um, and then, you know, going into my senior year, I realized that all, and I was done early with my, with my major, like all my requirements and all the side things, all the breath, all the breath, you know, courses and stuff. And, um, and I decided that I was going to just like only take art history classes. And, and I realized sort of at that moment, I was like, oh, and I was not at all in any way thinking about what am I going to do? I mean, I was, but I think about what am I going to do after graduation? You know, I kind of figured I would just, something would happen. I would figure it out. Um, so it was during my senior year that um, I realized that I was really happy thinking about art. And, and that was what I wanted to be able to do if I were to, you know, what, if I could choose something that I would want to do after my senior year. So, um, so I did apply for an internship at, at my college art museum, um, which was an, in, at the Berkeley Art Museum um, in California. And I was very fortunate to work with uh, Sidra Stitch, who was their chief curator, and she was working on a number of big projects. She was working on a pop art show and a surrealism show. And, you know, also she had, she was also, at, even then, back then, was working on a project with Joseph Kasuth. So it was a great opportunity to to really get to see the way a curator worked, and and to, and I was always super comfortable. I loved being in the museum. I just I just like go walking into that space. To me, felt like it. It, it was the same kind of feeling you feel like maybe when you go into like a Gothic cathedral. There was something kind of really spiritual about it, um, and also comfortable about it at the same time. And um, and you know that really kind of like took you out of your out of yourself. So. So I, I knew that that feeling was something that I wanted to hold on to and wanted to capture. And, and I guess I always, I also, um, you know, like, like Victoria, I just love the idea of going to museums so much. And I didn't want to have to, the idea of having to pay every time I went and having to be an outsider <laughs> was really like, that, like, that didn't feel right to me. Like I wanted to be able to go in for free anytime I wanted to. And, and I thought, well, I guess the only way I can do that is to actually just work there. <laughs> and find a way I also was you know was curious about like understanding how it worked you know understanding how it as a kind of complex construction um you know made something and and I don't have like a theater background or anything but it's not unlike theater on on so many levels but um but it's not you know it's a very different kind of of live live space so so I was you know lucky that as a senior I had a couple of like these revelational instincts and moments that I was lucky again also to be able to like find an internship and that's what I did um, also the summer I graduated I also did another internship at the De Young Museum in San Francisco and um, and then I took two years off before I went to grad school before I came to Williams um, and I took the time off because I, I wanted to be ready to go back I wanted to really want to write another paper and I wanted to you know I, I didn't want to have to feel burdened by it and you know, it did, it's funny how it didn't take long, like maybe it took less than, less than a year before I decided, oh, I really miss, you know, not being in a thinking environment, an intellectual environment, because I'm tight, CJ. Um, so, and so, so I, you know, again, and then, and, and then, you know, luckily it's not like a, it's not like such an esoteric path where I didn't have, you know, certain kinds of uh, stepping stones, you know, like taking the GR, GREs, you know, um, talking, figuring out what program you wanted to go to. And, and the, the next question was really deciding between an MA program or a PhD program. And, uh, and again, I didn't know if I wanted to like spend my whole life studying art history, but I knew that I liked the idea of being a curator. And so getting the master's seemed you know, important at the time. I, I did though, I have to say when I came back to school and I was super lucky, I came at a time when there was a lot of visiting professors, not that the, not that the, faculty here weren't fantastic, but like Linda Nochlin was one of the visiting professors. And, um, and I, you know, I took her class and I was like, wow, this is what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. I want to be this engaged in this kind of like alive thinking about issues. And that really kind of allowed me to pull other parts of my life into place. So, so I, I would say trust your instincts, you know, trust your instincts and trust your passions. And um, I think you may think that, oh gosh, you know, like I'm so weird and unusual to be wanting to do these things, but 
I think you can trust that like you're a product of your own society and they're, you know, and, and to, you know, to a certain extent, our society does reward individuality and you know, you'll find a place and it rewards creativity. And I think, you know, if you keep thinking hard enough and you keep kind of um, exploring enough, you know, you'll, you'll find the path, you'll, you'll find a path for yourself to, uh, to be on. Um, and, and, you know, and, and I think, I think if you talk to any of my other colleagues, you know, from Nina to Lisa, Pam, Noah, I think, you know, I think, I would think that they could, you know, think back on their own, where they were in their, in their early twenties and, and, you know, a sense of like, this is where I knew I wanted to go. Um, so yeah, so I, I definitely, I definitely, you know, encourage you to, to be true to yourself <laughs> because, because you're the one that's going to have to live with those decisions. And, um, and, and I, I just always had a hard time like spending 40 hours a week doing something I didn't like doing, you know, that, that was always, and, and I, I, I was never that good at saying, well, you know, this is what I need to do in order to like survive and, you know, have health, have benefits and, you know, be able to have these things that I might, I thought I wanted to have, you know, it was more, really what was more important to me was to be happy in what I was doing and really feel and figure, I figured I could make, I could make, I could make the rest of it work. You know, I could, I could do other work. So, so I, um, if you want more specifics, let's definitely just meet one-on-one -on -one and, and, you know, we can talk a little bit more, like, do you have an interest in graphic arts or, or graphic, you know, I'm thinking about it as an art form or if you're interested in live performance or theory or teaching, I mean, I'd love to talk to you more about, about that, um, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Great guys. Thank you. This is a really wonderful conversation.